Welcome to Athletes to Entrepreneurs, the Alumni Journey. I'm Rob Finkelstein, founder and CEO of Alumni Direct. We've created a platform where people can network and connect through their affinity groups, whether it be college alumni, fraternities or sororities, could be business alumni or athletes. And one of the things that we've done is we're looking to provide valuable content out. And, and athletes transitioning out of sports is a major problem today, whether it's uh, on the mental health side, it could be on financial literacy, uh, just networking, connecting, and we're trying to help that. And the idea behind the show is that we interview former collegiate and professional athletes and talk about their journey to teach and inspire athletes if there is, in fact, life after sports. Uh, today, we have Liz Vallad on. How you doing, Liz? Good. How are you, Rob? I'm doing fantastic. So Liz was a uh, a soccer and lacrosse player, dabbled a little bit in track for one, one semester at uh, Bridgewater College. And then uh, Liz went on to uh, in, in, uh, enlisted in the military. Thank you for your service. And no uh, she was in the military, ultimately uh, transitioned out into um, uh, stayed with the government uh, as a civilian, and then ultimately went back to school, got her uh, master's in sports management, and is now a baseball agent. So uh, we're going to talk about playing sports growing up. Tell us about how, what sports you played and, and how it kind of shaped you up through high school into college. Um, well, so my father was a soccer player growing up. He actually started the youth soccer league in the town that I grew up in when I turned five because we didn't have one organized before that. Uh, so my dad started the youth soccer league. I played baseball all the way through what was considered major. So that got me all the way up to what would have been the Little League World Series age. Uh, I also played basketball. Um Played at the, I actually played levels up. So when I was in seventh and eighth grade, I actually played on the JV team for soccer and for uh, basketball. And then my junior, freshman and junior years, I was, or freshman through senior years, I was actually on varsity for soccer and basketball. Uh, and then track, we don't really have, there isn't really JV and varsity. <laughs> so I did that all four years. Uh, as I was getting ready, as a kid, I wanted to be Jackie Joyner Kersey and thought I was going to the Olympics. Uh, unfortunately, I am not that fast. <laughs> <laughs> I actually was more of a distance runner in, when I ran track. Uh, I played on men's Olympic development program soccer level. So I was a pretty legitimate soccer player. Uh, part of that was because my brother is the is 18 months younger than me. So my mom was like, I am not driving one child one direction and one child the other direction when they're on the same team every other year. Uh, after that, I got a couple of uh, invites to like Nike goalkeeper camps and some of the elite soccer camps for goalkeepers as I was uh, between my junior and senior year of college. I was actually at one of the soccer camps on July 2nd, which was the day that you could begin recruiting when you hit that year, senior year that year. And I actually got a couple of offers at soccer camp to come to school uh, I had a few Division One soccer programs that offered me scholarships, uh, but ultimately I ended up choosing to go to Bridgewater College because the major that I chose, which I went to school for athletic training, uh, it's too hard to actually do athletic training as a major and play sports because sports is like a full-time job in college. In athletic training, you're required to have 1,500 hours of hands-on wow. experience before you can even sit for the exam. So I, I went the route of let's go to a smaller school where I can do both things that I wanted to do, uh, vice go into a larger school. And honestly, had a little bit of an attitude problem when I was younger and didn't want to sit as a freshman. So yeah. I was like, well, I'll go to, I went to a school, I started as a freshman. So I was happy with that. <laughs> yeah. And it's great that you did. It's it's interesting. I've had a conversation with this one company where they're working with um, high school athletes and their families to find the right fit for the school, kind of a holistic approach. So a lot of people, you know, depending on what sport they want to play at the best schools and the top schools, but uh, it's interesting. You kind of took that route. Like what they're doing is just let's find the best place for you, the best major, the best environment, the best chance to play and things like that. So that, that's great. So did um based on just um your skill set of, of being an athlete, I mean, did you see that helping kind of shape, shape yourself as you started going into the college level? Oh, yeah, 100%. By growing up and being an athlete, you have to learn responsibility, timeliness, teamwork, obviously, and any of the team sports. 
So it actually helped prepare me for college a little bit better, uh, especially freshman year of college. A lot of people do the craziness and they're like away from home for the first yeah. time and do everything they're not supposed to. Don't get me wrong. I did have a semester of my freshman year, my freshman's first semester. I did yeah, not everybody do so has well. <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, hey, look, you have a one, six, seven. That means you're not academically eligible to compete if you don't bring it up. And then after that semester, everything was like three eighths and above. So I, I, I did the, hey, I made a mistake and messed up, but recovered from it. Now, w when you um, when you were in um, in college, and this is something that's it's been a, a topic of discussion on a lot of my shows and just in general, um, were there like, I guess, I don't know, classes or, or were there efforts by the school? And I know because uh, you're younger, so, you know, it might have been when you're there. I mean, some of the older athletes didn't have, but were there efforts from the school to kind of shape the mindset of that there is life after sports and kind of prepare because I think it's less than a tenth of a percent make it at the professional level. Oh yeah, 100 percent my college. Well, so not only did they help athletes with the future, they also helped athletes achieve college in time. We had a it was called interterm. And during the month of January, you could take one class, but it was class from like 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. So it was a full actual like semester's worth of class. And that was able to, so because, I mean, we had to show up three weeks before school started to, and then sometimes we were there after the school year had ended, depending on how far we had gone into NCAA tournaments and things like that. But especially because I went to a division three school, there was way more of a focus on, hey, look, you have this opportunity. And we actually, so uh, there were probably five guys eyes on the baseball team that got drafted into the MLB and I was their athletic trainer because I'm a big baseball fan uh we had one guy go to the NFL uh never made it he was on the practice squads for like the Packers and things like that so it it wasn't one of the things where I was one of the big five you know I wasn't right. an SEC person where everybody's hounding you well and plus uh, I mean I graduated from college in 2003 there weren't really professional women's sports leagues back then right. even yeah and then, you know it's, it's interesting to say that I was talking to one person and she's just like her mindset, you know, as far as like future after sports was just that there were the perfect, like she was a hockey player and she just said, there's just not, you know, I mean, I guess the WNBA, I mean, there's, there's sports out there, but to your point, it's, um, and, and hopefully that's getting better and better, but still, even then, just like the male athletes, I mean, it's still, uh, you know, not a lot make it. So you have to start thinking about your future. So that's good that Bridgewater uh, did that. I mean, I know, um, we're, we're trying to make it an effort too, as a company is looking at, ways that we might be able to work with athletic departments and try to um, help them to develop maybe more curriculum around helping not only the current athletes, but the alumni athletes as well, um, which kind of uh, leads into the next question. And yeah, every school is different. I'm not sure how many alumni that Bridgewater has, but um, was there any that you saw like alumni involvement or even today with you where alumni coming back, not just for like golf tournaments or things like that, but more to, maybe work with the athletes and talk to them about, you know, bigger picture things, maybe jobs and things to that nature. Oh yeah. So in fact, when, when I used to live closer to my alma mater, I used to go back all the time and we'd always talk about, you know, so I went for athletic training because I knew I wanted to work in sports. In fact, I originally had gone physical therapy. I did my physical therapy internship and I realized not everyone in the general population wants to get healthy and perform. Right. So uh, like my senior year of college, one of the basketball players, she blew out her knee and had the unhappy triad. So MCL, ACL and meniscus tear. Wow. And I actually basically lived with her for a month to rehab her to be able to play in the NCAA tournament with a knee brace on because she was that committed to, hey, I want to be back. And then after the season had surgeries, but when I worked with general population, they were more lackadaisical and didn't necessarily care. And I was like, Oh, that is not the career path I want to go. So it was like athletic training. It is. And then when I lived closer to my school, I would always go down I, because I didn't end up being an athletic trainer. Actually, my advisor had the army call me because like, like I had told you previously before the podcast started recording uh, on September 11th, I was a New Yorker living in Virginia, uh, took September 11th kind of personal and was like, I want to jump out of airplanes and shoot bad guys. Uh, I ended up officially joining the army in October of 2000. And 
uh, one, because I had to retake the ASVAB, the Army placement test. Uh, and then my advisor actually reached out to the Army because the Army has the AMED program, which is where they'll pay for you to go to med school and things like that. And she tried to convince me to go physical therapy through the Army. And I was like, nah, I don't really want to do that. But then afterwards, uh, I was stationed at Fort Belvoir, which is about two and a half hours away from my school for the first couple of years. And I would go down and I would talk to any of the athletes that I had worked with because I still knew the coaches from being either their trainer or because they were my coach. Right. And I would sit down and talk to them and be like, hey, this is the route I chose. Uh, I actually did have a couple of other athletes out of my school decide they wanted to join the military, but they've always, people are always interested in what you do and where it got you and how you ended up there. And if you would have asked me on September 10th, if I would have been in the army, I would have been like, you're crazy. (laughs) Yeah, no, it's, it's things like that change the life. And I, again, we, uh, we appreciate everybody in the military for, for all that. So um, I'm going to talk about, uh, we're talking about that now. So let's talk about the transition so, you know, here you are, collegiate athlete. Now you're going on to the military. Talk about um, that transition kind of out of sports and then going into the military. Uh, so it's funny. I called my mom probably the second week of basic training. Well, you don't really get to call all the time. So my first phone call I got to make to my mom at basic training, I was like, Mom, why didn't you tell me to join the Army? I, I loved it. Like it was every day was starting out working out. So it was very similar to when you're training for the season. I mean, granted, it got really annoying when I'd have to walk 20 miles with like 60 pounds of gear on my body. (laughs) But I mean, it's a very regimented type system. So kind of like as an athlete, wake up, hit the gym, you know, do breakfast, things like that. Uh, The military basically kept you on that same path where you knew exactly what you're doing and things were scheduled out. Yeah, I, I can. Yeah, I mean, that, that that definitely plays in. It's, I guess, in a sense, too. I mean, people talk about when you enter into, say, the business world, same kind of thing. I mean, you've, you're taking that skill set. So you're in the military. And then um, ultimately, when you um, a lot of people talk about you can't compare the two, obviously, because military is like, you know, could be life and death. But mm-hmm. they talk about similarities that when veterans are done uh, in the military, transitioning back into into you know the business world or whatever and the challenge is just like athletes kind of face similar things i mean do you see that since you were kind of in in both those worlds Uh, so it it is very different so the military is like sports it has its own language you can go up to another baseball fan and you can talk about rbis and you know era and whip and people have that common understanding same thing with anyone with the nfl they understand that terminology the military has a very strict terminology. We use acronyms for everything. And I just like would forget to like spell things out. Or I'd talk to somebody who had never been in the military who looked at me like, what are you talking about? And then I had to break it down and be like, oh, this is how it translates and things like that. Right. Um, one of the uh, One of the weirder parts of the transition out of the military is we get a sense of dark humor. Uh, especially when you deploy a lot and dark humor is how you get th- through a lot of things. And that's something that's also acceptable in the sports level is more of that rough, not politically correct right. chat and things like that. But when it comes to the business world, totally not, not acceptable. <laughs> right. No, I, I, absolutely. I mean, it's, and I, I guess it's that learning curve of kind of c- coming back into that. Um, I know, um, you yeah, know, just people talk about, I've had uh, one guy was a, um, he played football in college and he's a, you know, ultimately became a CEO of a lot of large companies. And he talks about just that athlete skill set and everything we talked about, the practice, the preparation, the leadership, and, and just how important that is, uh, you know, for businesses to look at that. And, and again, same thing with, um, you know, every, all that skill set too in the military and, and then some. Uh, so um, one other um, thing I want to talk about um, kind of going back is uh, talk a little about NIL name image likeness. And it's it's a big topic now. So I kind of want to get your thoughts um, based on, you know, positive and negatives, but looking at it from an athlete standpoint and then taking the agent perspective. As an athlete, I would have loved for NIL to have existed. I mean, not that anyone is going to ever, I probably am never going to be 
worried about my NIL <laughs> being used for anything. Um, but I understand, especially like Ed O'Banion brought up a really good point. EA Sports literally was making their sports games and it was their name, image, and likeness. I mean, right. sure. you could pretty much look at it and be like, hey, that's person. Well, or even baseball, for example, in a lot of the baseball games, everybody knew that John Dowd was actually Barry Bonds. <laughs> right, right. So it's like, so I understand that. However, some of this stuff I think is a little bit out of control. Uh, like the, no offense to the LSU gymnast who has like 2 million in endorsements. Congratulations for her. Yeah. But reading about how much it's disrupted college competitions for the other gymnasts when she shows up to a place. So I think, I think part of it's just because it's new that that balance isn't there. Um, my other main concern is it doesn't level the playing field because you're going to have colleges that have more people who can get the bigger endorsements. And historically they've always gotten the better athletes and things like that. Right. But now it, the playing field is not level at all. Yeah. I, I think that that's something that has to be done. I mean, I know another area I was talking to one guy, a uh, former NFL guy, and he said he would have loved it too. I mean, obviously they get paid, but um, his concern was on the financial side and just the financial oh, yeah. literacy. It just, and and I, I always say this is it's not just the athlete, it's any young people in general that just don't understand, you know, now you got a windfall of money, you got to pay taxes on it, you got to do different yep. things with it. Um, so uh, um, I think there's a need for more education. I mean, would you agree on that with that? Oh, agreed 100%. I think that, I and I think it should, should not just be college athletes. I mean, while it pertains to them more, but simple things like, People don't learn how to balance checkbooks. They don't know yeah. how to do taxes. And it's all that stuff. Like I learned it growing up because we didn't have all the electronic banking. I mean, still writing checks and had to write down to figure out if you had the money and things like that. But it's not something that people do these days. And you're starting to see it grow like as society as a whole. But I would be 100% supportive if the NCAA had like athlete classes of, hey, here's different things that you may come up with if you're going to end up going pro like some of these people who try to trap players into having children and just some of those situations where not everyone might face it but I think and if the NCAA could possibly do it I know like uh, NFL does the rookie camp where yeah. they bring all the guys in for that but by the time they're in the NFL it's probably too late that's something that should probably be started more at the high school yeah. And even if they do it as targeted, maybe maybe that's something as you do the NCAA clearinghouse and try to get your NCAA eligibility, maybe the NCAA should put it in there to be like, hey, these are some things that you may face in your future. Even if it's something basic, you know, yeah. an hour or two would even help. Versus oh, no, nothing. That, that, yeah, that's a great idea. And I, and I agree with you, like high school level, I mean, because obviously the NIL now too, I mean, you're seeing all the high school athletes getting paid a lot of money too. And I think it's just um definite need for education. So, um, Let's talk about um, maybe like some advice on, you know, coming out of, um, you know, a as an athlete coming out of, uh, you know, being done with your career, maybe give advice to some of the athletes of things that they should look to do or how they think about themselves. A lot of times it seems like athletes tend to identify um, the baseball player or the softball player, the soccer yeah. player, but how, how do they say I'm Liz, I'm Rob? So very similar in the military. To me, I was major of a lad. I was, you know, a person that supported special operations, did all my combat deployments, and I very much identified with that. And I actually went through like a bit of a lull period of trying to figure out who I actually was outside of the military because it had become, especially when you do a 21-year career, that is who you become. Yeah. And so that switch of, hey, I was Liz the soccer player to Liz the soldier, it, it just kept that going. So then all of a sudden I'm 40 years old and I'm like, ah, what do I, uh, who am I and what do I want to do? So I, I spent a lot of time doing a lot of the soul searching type things. And I started talking a lot with more of the people that were a little bit older than me about what to do when I was done with the military. And actually my, my friend, Dave, he, uh, he's actually my uh, financial advisor. Uh, he left the military and started working for Edward Jones. And I actually, in order to get hired on as an investment banker, I guess with Edward Jones, they have to have like 25,000 in capital that people will say they'll donate for him to bring into his portfolio. So I was one of his initial investors for 
like five thousand dollars uh he now has a whole lot more money than that for me <laughs> but dave and i were talking one day after he had switched over and he's like the best thing that i learned is I, he was like, don't get me wrong. I loved working for the army, but it started to become more of a grind and wasn't as fulfilling as what I thought it was. He's like, I've always been interested in investment banking. And so now I don't feel like I'm working. And I was like, oh, that's a good point. So here we are, we're out like having tacos or something. And he was like, you love baseball, you know, why don't you get back into that? And so that's what got me to go back to get my master's in sports management I honestly originally thought I was going to go the baseball operations route. I actually interviewed with a couple of teams, uh, but then I realized being in baseball operations is like being in the military. It's a 12 hour day with a long grind. And I was like, you know what? I already did that once. Let's do something else. And when my friend approached me with the opportunity to work with her and start with a baseball agency, I was like, sure, why not do it? And yes, it's a little bit of calculated risk taking because I mean, not everyone comes in and starts off as Scott Boris or Drew Rosen. I mean, yeah, <laughs> everyone's yeah. like, who are you? And it's simple things like making a website, setting up email accounts, uh, coming up with company logos. But it was really fun to do because it was something fun and exciting. And even though I've been on the go for the past three weeks, flying all over the country for spring training and things like that. And I'm like, man, I should be feeling worn out by this. I'm loving it. I mean, how, to me, I'm like, I wake up, I fly somewhere, I go to a baseball game, and then I go home, and it's fun. Yeah, that that's awesome. It, it's it's great to do what you love. So, I mean, that, that's the nugget out of that. Everybody is just find what you're passionate about it and, and do it for sure. Uh, so, um, one one of the things, um, you know, we we've talked about, um, like play, you know, play athletes, um, networking, connecting. And I've talked to some, um, you know, some of the coaches and, and other agents as well. And they said that the best time to do that is when they're playing. Um, but a lot of people, obviously, the athletes are focused on the sport. So give give me your thoughts, especially now that you're on this other side of it as an agent. Um, you know, do you see that with athletes? I mean, you know, everybody's different. But as a whole, um, do you see challenges with them, like networking, connecting with others to ultimately build that like that for sports? So I, I wish that I would have started networking sooner because uh, I met a lot of people that now looking back would have been huge to help me out with what I'm doing now. Because all my friends, that even the friends I went to college with or people that I met in college, now they, they have their successful business. And I'm like, hey, I'm at the baby step starting up. But I, to me, the, the one piece of advice that I wish I had been given when I was younger is that every opportunity to network that you can get, you should take even though it may not be something that interests you or it shouldn't, it may not be exactly what you're looking for. You never know who you may run into down the road that could potentially either help you or you may end up even working together. You just never know. So anytime you can network, you should definitely do that. Yeah, no, no doubt. And, and then uh, the, the last question um, about, uh, you know, one of the things we've talked about, I was talking about college before preparing athletes, um, I've talked to different major league baseball players and NFL and all that. And it seems that, um, the leagues, you know, whether it's a bandwidth issue or whatever, I mean, it's not that they don't care, but like, they're, you know, they're focused, I guess, on the athletes. What are you seeing with, um, athletes that you work with that are retired athletes? Um, do you see kind of help coming from whether it be major league baseball, minor league baseball? Uh, so a lot of it tends to be the players all help themselves to help each other, if that makes sense. Yeah. They're like, hey, we played, you know, we played rookie ball back in 1993 and you do something that could help me. So, it, it, I mean, it was all networking back then. Right. I guess I just didn't take the amount of time that I should have. OK. Um, and then so I'm actually working on my MBA at Syracuse right now. And they had uh, I went to a course. Uh, a residency in New York City and they actually had like Syracuse alum come in and talk to you I went to an entrepreneurial uh, deal negotiating course and they had like we had people from Broadway come in and talk what about what it was like to be a producer and then, ironically one of the kids graduated from I shouldn't call him a kid because he's an adult but he graduated from Syracuse in like December of 2022 and now he's a multi-millionaire and it was funny. It was like, yeah, one of my investors was one of those old school uh, alumni who graduated in like 2015. And I'm like, 
<laughs> I'm way older than you. I could probably be your mom. <laughs> but like even things like that. So like uh, there's different networking events that a lot of colleges usually host. And that's something that you should definitely try to get into because that was extremely valuable. I mean, granted, when I was in that course, nobody was talking about sports. It was like real estate and startup businesses and things like that. But still, you can always gain information. Right. You can always gain information. Sometimes it's what not to do, but most yeah. of the time it is what to do. Yeah, no, that that's great. I mean, that's kind of what we encourage. I mean, within our community centers is having that, you know, the alumni is something, is something special about alumni. I mean, it's kind of you get one step above when you meet fellow alumni. And, you know, maybe that person doesn't have to be, you know, they might not be the greatest person. You don't know that until the relationship, but you, you kind of have that feel like you went to the same school, even if it's many years apart. And I think people are willing to help. So um, this has been great. So tell people how they can find you. So if you have a stud baseball player, it could be a, a high school player, college player, could be a, somebody from one of the Latin countries. How do they get a hold of you and, and, and find your your uh, your agency? All right. So uh, the agency is Pro Level Baseball Group. I will caveat with our website is going through a domain transfer right now. So it's in a temporary uh, pattern because we're waiting it for it to get switched over. But uh, they can reach out to me. My email is Liz and then V as in Victor at ProLevelBBGroup.com. And obviously they can always reach out to you because you have my information too. I'm on LinkedIn. I don't necessarily do some of the other social media stuff that's well before my time and being in the military we were never allowed to have it so now i'm like i don't understand what a tiktok is <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm with you that's that's, that's the, the younger generation for sure but uh now this has been great and we'll put it in the show notes also and uh you can find alumni direct on alumni direct.com uh, also you can uh see us on linkedin and facebook instagram twitter all those and and follow the show we're on uh, both youtube as well as uh, all the major podcast networks we really want to make an impact in helping athletes out and uh, inspiring them to their futures. And uh, again, great having you, Liz. I appreciate all the time. Oh, and it, even if somebody's not a baseball person and they just have random questions, feel free to reach out. I am more than willing to share anything that I have learned along the way, or I may be able to help point you in the right direction of somewhere to get you where you want to go. No, that's great. And I appreciate that. So, all right, uh, we will talk again.